Good day to you and welcome to 2016 Security Awareness Training. Let's dive right in today into our topics and talk about what's hot in information security. Today we want to talk about ransomware. Ransomware is software that gets installed on your system and proceeds to encrypt all your files and make them unavailable to you. And then what the bad guys do is they force you to pay in order to unencrypt those files and get your files back. A very good video with an overview of ransomware. This from YouTube and ABC News. Another security scare involving your personal information. Hackers out there taking control of your personal computers, forcing you to pay to get the information back. ABC's Matt Gutman reports tonight the newest victim, a hospital and your medical records. Tonight, the FBI says the only thing you can do if hackers are holding your info hostage is pay up. That's exactly what Hollywood Presbyterian Hospital did after so-called ransomware infected the hospital's computer systems. Once you see it, it's far too late. You're done. Game over. Eventually, the hospital paid $17,000 to get its files back. Ransomware has already claimed more than a million victims. Hackers now hunting bigger prey. This police department in Tewksbury, Massachusetts, forking over $500 to get its files back last year. The best option for us, even though it was the last and worst option for us, was to uh, pay the ransom. Here's how it works. You open an infected email, which turns your files into encrypted gobbledygook. Then the stick up. Pay the ransom to get the decryption key or kiss those files goodbye. Tonight, the hospital still open, leaving this message on its voicemail. We want to assure you that patient care has not been compromised as we continue to address this incident. Over a million cases and only a handful solved, which is why the experts say you've got to protect yourself by backing up your files. And when you're done with the hard drive, unplug it from the computer. David. All right, Matt. So an interesting delivery mechanism of ransomware is what is called macro malware. Delivering malware by using Microsoft Office documents is nothing new. It's been around since the 1990s. But what these Office documents do is they tell us that we need to enable content in order to view the documents themselves. And when we enable these macros, we allow an attacker to run programs on our computer, which can also include ransomware. So here's an interesting video of ransomware in action. This particular user receives an invoice. And of course, that arouses their curiosity. So they need to see what this invoice is about. And they open up the Word document and see that there's a security warning that macros have been disabled. And in order to see what's in that document, they enable the content. And the second the user enables the content and clicks OK, the code runs on their system. Watch what happens to the files on the left-hand side of the screen, and you will see that they are being encrypted. And it doesn't matter. You could close the Word document at this point. It won't stop things from happening. You're seeing ransomware in action. And ultimately what you get is the message from the bad guy as to where you can go and what you need to do in order to pay to get your files back. Another popular delivery mechanism is through what is called malvertising. This is malware that uses online advertisements to spread malicious code. See, bad guys buy ad space on online advertising markets so that their malware-infected advertisements can then be displayed on your computer. And normally what this type of malware will try to do is take advantage of vulnerable software or vulnerable browser plugins in your computer. So if your software is vulnerable, the malware, such as ransomware, can be easily delivered. So obviously it's important to keep your computer software and your browser plugins up to date, which will help prevent these infections from malvertising. And we'll also talk later about some other tools that you can use to further protect yourself. But it's important to understand that ransomware works because the victim is not prepared for the outcome. The victim ends up having to pay because they're not ready. And you can be ready. There's one really important concept that we want to talk about today. And that is that your computer's defenses will fail you. Antivirus and other security defenses just can't catch everything. And that's why it's really, really important to be alert, to be suspicious, and to make good online decisions in order to protect yourself. It's why the best antivirus you have is your own brain. 
So in order to make ransomware ineffective, you really should always keep your files backed up and keep those backups offline so that the ransomware can't access your backups. Unplug the backup drive when you're done using it, store it in a location where ransomware can't get access to it. If you do this, then you won't have to pay the bad guys in order to get your files back. And according to Microsoft, there's really no guarantee that if you pay that you're going to get them back anyway. So by thwarting the bad guy, you won't allow them to make any money off you. So let's change the subject now and talk about the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things is things that get computers installed in them so that they can talk on the Internet. Here's a great video introduction to the Internet of Things from our friends at Cisco. This is the cat that drank the milk and let in the dog that jumped on the woman who brewed the coffee. Brew coffee. That woke the man who was late for work. All right. I gotta go. And drove the car. Driverless mode engaged. That found the parking spot. Find parking space. Parking space found. That alerted the door that opened the control room. Hey, Bob. That secured the data that directed the turbines, that powered the sprinklers, that watered the grass, that fed the cow, that made the milk, that went to the store, that reminded the man to buy the milk, that was poured by the girl who loved the cat, that drank the milk. The internet of everything is changing everything. Cisco, tomorrow starts here. So the internet of things, your fridge talks on the internet. Your washer and dryer can talk to your TV set, and you can control any of these things from anywhere using your smartphone. A lot of fun is made of the Internet of Things, so let's have a little fun with it. Of course, everyone needs more Wi-Fi in their toothbrush, right? That's really, really important. This is one of my favorites. This is a wine bottle that is Wi-Fi enabled, so that when you run out of wine, you can order new wine for the wine bottle directly from the wine bottle. Fabulous. Of course there's the usual fun, like hackers taking control of an internet-connected toilet, which ultimately ends up in messy consequences. But there is stuff that's way more serious about the Internet of Things, because since everything will talk to everything else, it can become an enormous legal and security nightmare. There are privacy issues. This is a very interesting privacy issue. This is a doll called My Friend Kayla that has an app, and kids can talk to this doll, and this doll will respond to them. Of course, the doll is programmed through its software to only say things that are appropriate for a child. And this is a buddy of mine at a recent conference where he was hacking this doll and getting this doll to say some pretty interesting things. Here's an interesting video from a different researcher. What are you doing today? I'm going to have coffee with Christian Grey, and I hate coffee. <laughs> what did you have for lunch? I had liver with some father things and a nice Chianti. <laughs> Will the sun stop shining? Not worried about artificial intelligence. You should be. <laughs> well, that's kind of creepy. Things can get even more interesting. I mean, how long will it take before a bad guy forces you to pay $10,000 to open your front door before your fridge melts? I mean, the Internet of Things could easily become the next frontier for ransomware. This is way more serious, though. Here's an Internet-connected hospital drug pump that has a web server on it, and that web server was vulnerable to attack. It became possible for a hacker in this instance to hack into this particular drug pump and change the drug doses. Here's another interesting one. This is a heart monitor that's used during heart surgery. In this particular case, the monitor stopped working during a patient's procedure, forcing them to stop the procedure until they could get the heart monitor working again. Why did it stop? It stopped because an antivirus scan started on the heart monitor and interfered with it working properly. Why was antivirus running on the monitor in the first place? Because according to security research, the vendor most likely had to install it knowing that the device would not get its proper security updates. So it's kind of a scary space right now. Then there's the super serious stuff. 
critical infrastructure connected either to the internet or to networks that might be accessible to hackers through other means. Interesting story of the Ukraine power grid hack, where attackers were able to cut the power for a significant period of time. How did the bad guys get access to this power grid in the first place? They used phishing emails, getting users to click on links or install software to give them the access they needed. There's a lot of critical infrastructure sectors that need to be protected as more of these are becoming connected. But some of the sectors that are important to local government include things like agriculture and food, dams, government facilities, communications, emergency services, public health, very significant things. Properly protecting this critical infrastructure is a serious task, and we will no doubt see more stories of attacks against it as we enter into this new world of connected devices.